Hi, my name is Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the latest regional lockdowns imposed by the governments related to COVID in parts of the north of England, which make no sense at all. And you have to wonder whether Boris Johnson and his government really are that thick or if it's deliberate just to avoid responsibility. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, since the government very quickly and arbitrarily removed our COVID lockdown restrictions, the rate of infection has, of course, gone up. There is a balance, naturally, between controlling the virus and maintaining life on our little plague island. But the problem was that when more sensible countries eased their lockdowns, they had other systems in place to suppress the virus because they spent the lockdown building those up. Now, we had promises. We had the promise of a world-beating tracing app that never appeared, a tracing contact program that still isn't working anywhere close to capacity, a testing program that still isn't good enough to meet the government's promise to routinely test high-risk key workers, or even give tests to people arriving in the UK from another high-risk country. So the rate of infection didn't just rise in a mathematical sense, which is inevitable. I mean, that, that is going to happen. Um, and it can be tolerated to a certain extent, but it shot up. So the government turned to local lockdowns. Now, restrictions obviously should be managed locally. There is, there is no issue there. The problem is that it is still the government controlling the levers of those lockdowns in England. The resources and powers haven't been handed over to the local authorities who have the local knowledge and motivation to see local flare-ups and deal with them before they affect the whole town or region. So instead of little lockdowns, little restrictions of small areas or businesses or a school, for example, you know, for these small but noticeable flare-ups that a local authority would see, you get region-wide restrictions because by the, government, the time the government have seen it, it's blown up to the point where you've gotten it badly out of hand and you have to lock down the whole town or city. In addition, there are, of course, a lot of people not complying with the restrictions in a way that they did in the early days of that late March, April period, because they don't appreciate the government's hypocrisy in defending members of their own inner circle when they broke the rules. This Barnard Castle fiasco has really undermined the whole thing, as we said it would at the time. So now the government have imposed restrictions in Manchester, Lancashire and parts of good old Yorkshire. But those restrictions are a bit baffling. But the first thing to point out before I go through those is, again, what has happened here is the government have announced effectively laws late last night. Last night, they just came out on social media announcing that laws that didn't previously exist were going to exist in some parts of the country. Now, as legal commentators keep pointing out, expert legal commentators, this, this is not how things are supposed to be run in a democracy. You know, they've created new criminal charges for people without properly communicating, without going through Parliament, without having any basic checks, just being announced on Twitter. But anyway, these, these rules, as they were coming out from the Department for Health, which is um, responsible for this legislation, so you're not allowed in these areas to meet someone in your own home unless one of you is from a single person household. So let's say, um, you know, you have a, a relative, a brother, say, who lives on their own and you've identified them as part of your household bubble. It's not just that they can come round, but if you've said, right, your household, maybe you've got a family, but your brother lives on their own and you've decided that these two households are your bubble. Your brother can visit, you can visit your brother. That's still okay. But if not, if it's like your parents and they obviously, there's two of those in their household and you've got your family in your household and you can't meet in your home, vice versa. However, you can meet as many people as you like outside of your house. You can go down the pub and meet them. That's no problem. Now, the way the Department for Health explained this to the media, was that they wanted to suppress household transmission. As if 
household transmission is way worse than pub or restaurant transmission because I'm pretty sure the opposite is true. And this is where my natural cynicism goes into overdrive because that of course makes no sense. From a healthcare point of view, that is, it makes no sense. But of course, it could be intended to make no sense. For example, why would you say you want to focus on household transmission? Um, is it that pub or restaurant based transmission only adds a tiny proportion of COVID infections and the vast majority occur in the home? No, 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 no reason to suppose that at all. Is it because people are basically behaving themselves in pubs and restaurants, all being very good, face masks on at all times when they're not eating or drinking, maintaining that massive social distance, um, applying all the measures religiously? Behave yourself. It is because if you visit your family, or if your family visit you in your home, you aren't pumping money into the economy, not really spending anything. But if you go to the pub or to a restaurant, than you are. In addition, so imagine this scenario. So that, you know, just on that level, you can imagine, well, that's why they didn't want to put restrictions on pubs and restaurants, because people go there and spend money. We want to keep those open. But we do want to suppress the virus where we can, so we'll just say no in households. But you think about it a little bit further, go down that path. So if you're told you're not allowed to meet your parents at home, so that's what many of these people have been told. But you can meet them in a pub or a restaurant and you really want to meet your parents, doesn't that encourage more people to go out than ordinarily would? Because these are people who wouldn't have ordinarily gone to the pub or to a restaurant where they are much more likely to contract the virus. But now they will go because that's the only way they can legally meet their parents. This is literally a supposed lockdown measure that actually encourages people to go out and congregate in an indoor place where there are lots of other strangers. Now, of course, we're not saying they can only meet in a pub or restaurant, they could meet in the park, for example. But what if it's raining? You'll choose an indoor location. And from a healthcare point of view, like I say, it, it isn't just that this policy makes no sense. It can actively make things worse. You know, this is like potentially worse than not doing anything. And then there's the confusing message so the government have decided we've put these restrictions in place. OK, now I'm not in an area that has been affected by local lockdown as yet. So I don't really know the procedure. Maybe someone can help me out. Now, I do pay attention to government statements and actions for a living. So I keep up to date with what the government are saying. But I'm not really sure how many are listening. You know, it's a little bit like in teaching, we always say, you know, you can teach doesn't mean your students have learned. Same thing. The government can announce a message. Doesn't mean it was heard. How is it heard? How do people in Manchester, for example, become informed about the nature of the new lockdown? You know, many people may just get it from the media. And correspondents were contacting the Department of, uh, for Health last night, as well as conducting interviews this morning, about what the measures were exactly, what it means for people. And they were getting conflicting statements. You know, there's a surreal Twitter thread by a BBC editor showing just this, which I'll link in the description below. And again, you could say, you know, this is either gross incompetence or deliberate confusion of the message. Which is it? Because both are possible. We know that the civil service is in a mess due to Dominic Cummings' cack-handed attempts to reform it. But we also know that the government deliberately throw out multiple contradictory messages on any given topic, not just this, and then in the future, when they decided what message was the right one, then they point, well, we actually said, I think you'll find on this particular date, I said that. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, you did. And that'll fool a lot of people. But I'll also know that they said something completely contradictory at the same time to a different audience. You know, and that's the fact that they will be ignored. So either is possible. And yes, yes, I know, I've said it enough my times myself, never ascribe to malice that which may be explained by incompetence. But I actually want to know which one it is, and either is plausible. But you could easily end up with people seeing the message that they can't visit their mum at home, for example, but can meet her in a restaurant, and so they arrange to go and do just that. They don't necessarily get any updated message at the point at which I am talking about this, 
the message may have been updated in the few hours between me recording it and you listening to this. And in a situation like this, the government have one shot at informing people. Not everyone follows the news all day. Not everyone follows every government statement. They may get a single piece of news and then not bother to check it up. That piece of news may be second hand. Someone may tell them that they were listening to, you know, the, the breakfast radio and, and it was this. A few hours later, all of a sudden, it's not that. One shot. That's what you've got to get it right and to make it clear. And they are not doing that. It even looks like the health secretary this morning was contradicting the statement on his own department's website, for goodness sake. And at that point, it actually, from a practical point of view, I'm curious, but from a practical point of view, it makes no difference whether it is malice or incompetence, because either way, it means that you have a region of the country that is so badly affected by the spread of the virus that even this laissez-faire government take action to try and suppress it. It's like, oh, it's really bad there. We need to take action. OK, it's really bad. But they do so in such a way that you will, at best, have minimal impact and at worst, make the situation worse, actively make it worse. Then I had also another sneaky little thought. Hopefully this isn't true if I really drill down. But I keep noticing all these local lockdowns being in largely Labour areas. Are they trying to kill off Labour voters before the next general election? Is that their strategy now? But whatever their strategy is, it is certainly not to provide a clear, consistent, effective message. So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below, particularly if you are affected by this. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.